Once you have your car ready to be tested, what we need to do is create a box that will go around your car and it will act as the wind tunnel. Right. So to do that, we just need to go to File, New, and we're just going to go to the part file here. Just make sure that yours is in metric. All right, so part file, then standard millimeter. So this file here. Okay, we're going to start a new sketch. Click on the XY plane. I'm going to go to the rectangle tool. And I'm going to lock it to the middle where the origin is. Drag it out this way. I'm going to go 100 millimeters. I'll click on the other one here. Go 100 millimeters. I just press front so you can see. Okay, once that's completed, okay, I'm just zooming out and then I'm going to go to extrude. All right, I want to extrude this by 600 millimeters. Press OK. So at the moment, we've got that box that we wanted. So we're just going to go ahead and save this. So I'm just going to go to the floppy disk at the top here. I'm just going to call this one box. Press save. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my assembly file. Okay, so this is my car. And I want to place that box. Alright, onto this file here. Just going to click once and then press escape on my keyboard. So, one thing you notice at the moment is that you can't actually see the car. Okay, the reason why is this box is a solid. Okay, and we want to make that transparent. Okay, so if we right click on it, and go to transparent, now we can see inside that box. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to go, I'm going to do is go down to uh, the front, and I want to line this up so it's pretty close to the bottom of those uh, wheels, and make sure it's central as well as as best as you can. I'm going to go to the other side now, to the right. Okay, and I'm just going to drag this back a little bit. Okay, so the car's towards the front of the, the box. Okay, I'm just going to go check the front again. That up a tiny bit more. Yep, that should be good. Okay, once you've got this sorted, I'm going to get you to save that. Press OK. Alright, and then we're going to go to simulation. An active model. Press OK. The model will start loading into the CFD program. This may take a little while. Okay, so as you can see in red, okay, there's a few issues that we need to solve. So um, with this box that's just appeared, okay, this is going to edge merge. All right, so as you can see here, um, we've got some problems with the edges. So I'm going to just click merge, and it's going to solve these 12 problems here. Okay, so that completed. All right, we're going to go to small object because I can see here there's an error with that. Okay, and there's two edges there that we want to remove. We'll click that.
and then we can remove this box here. Okay, so at the moment we can't see through the box that we created. So the first thing I want to do is find the box, which is that one there. Go right click, outline. So all of a sudden you can start to see inside, okay, you can start to see um, your car. All right, so with the box, we want to change this, okay, so it's um, producing wind, right, for our wind tunnel. So if we go right click, edit, and at the moment it's set to fluid air, okay, so that's correct, let's go apply. Alright, so that's done. Now all of this is unassigned. So for the car itself, I'm going to go right click, edit. And rather than fluid, we're going to change it to solid. And you can choose your material. So I use uh, wood soft. And go apply. Okay, so now we need to set some boundary conditions. So for the front, um, of the wind tunnel. We're going to click and hit it. Alright, so we want meters per second for the airflow. Alright, and we're going to change it to 20 meters per second. Okay, because the track is 20 meters long and the cars um, run roughly around one second. Alright, so that's as close as we can get it for now. So we're going to go apply. And then on the back of this wind tunnel, so I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to click here. Go edit. And I'm going to change this one to pressure. And just leave all the settings as they are. Go apply. Okay, so the only other thing that we need to do is before there was an error, um, here, okay, with our meshing. So we're going to go to mesh sizing and go auto size. Okay, so that should have fixed that problem for you as well. All right, the last thing that we need to do now is to go solve. Press OK. So you can choose to either do this on your computer or on the cloud. I'm going to choose the cloud for this test. And I'm going to go solve. Just press OK. This will start preparing itself. Okay, so it's queued at the moment. It's going to start running. Okay, and just uploading all the files and everything else. Eventually, you'll see everything appear here and your test will start loading itself. As you can see now, it's starting to load. This may take a little while. As you can see now, it's starting to go through a little bit further into the process. It's now changed from Q to solvent, okay, and we're probably going to have to give this another couple of minutes and then eventually um, you'll start to see a graph appear um, it'll give us an indication of how um, the process is going. As you can see here, the graph has now appeared, okay, we're at iteration 49, okay, um, when we set the iteration, we set it for 100. Okay, so we need to make sure that it runs all the way through to 100, and then we'll see what the final results are. The ones that are important for us, and you can see it here as well, I'm going to turn around my model. Okay, the, um, the Z axis is important for us, so that's in pink. Okay, that's the airflow, right? So we need to make sure that that there um, stays completely flat. Okay, and that will mean that that result is completely finished for us. Additionally, the y-axis, which is the um, green line, okay, the y-axis is up and down. That's going to tell us about um, lift and downforce on the car. Okay, so we want to make sure that those lines are flat. So that means that our um, car is completely done. It's been tested properly. 
Okay, and that way we can start looking at the results. All right, if it's not completely finished off, obviously we need to set the um, set the test to go again for another 100 iterations, and you can keep testing it until those lines are flat. All right, but we'll let this one this one run for now, and we'll see what the results are after that. So we now have reached 100. Um, we can see the pink line is relatively flat. However, it is uh, declining a little bit. Um, the green is declining quite a bit. So obviously, it hasn't quite sorted itself out just yet. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to reset this again. Okay, so we're going to go to Setup. And we're going to go to Solve. Okay, and then we're going to go again. So just press Solve. Okay, and that's going to keep running again on top of the test that we've just done, right, until we can get those lines as flat as possible. So now the iteration's at 200. Okay, we can start to see that they're slowly starting to flatten out a little bit. Um, however, it's not quite done just yet. So I'm going to have to go through a few times the same process as before where we go to Setup and then go to Solve. I'm going to have to do this probably a couple more times until those are perfectly flat. Okay, then I'll show you the end result. So I've just returned back to my computer. It says the analysis is done. So I'm just going to click on plot. And at the moment, I can see that those lines are flattening out now. Okay, so it did actually stop before it got to 300, all right, which means that it's complete. All right, so um, we can start doing everything that we need to do now. So the first thing that we're going to do is go um, and right click on the box and go outline. Okay, so now we can start to see the car again. All right, um, we're going to go, actually we'll just rotate this box around first so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, um, then we're going to go to planes and we're going to add a plane. Okay, so already if I go to the side of my car, I can start to see uh, where there's going to be turbulent flow, which is obviously going to be at the back behind um, the main part of the car. Okay, but you can start to see how the rest of the car is performing as well. Um, if I go back, all right, we can start playing around with that sketch, uh, with that um, plane, sorry. If we just click on it, click on the edit feature here, okay, we can start to move that plane. Okay, so. Um, you might want to concentrate on the side of the car, for example, about there, all right, and see how that's going to look. All right, otherwise, we can rotate it here as well. All right, so we're going to use, we're going to rotate this to 90. Okay, and we're just going to move this to the front. Okay, all right, once that's done, just cancel out of it. And then we're going to go to traces. And go add. All right. So what we're going to do is click on the front here. All right. So I know roughly the car is down here in this portion. Okay. I'm going to click here and drag it across this way. Click again. I'm just going to drag it down. Okay. And you'll see what this will do in a second. If I go back here, all right, see how we've got all the flow lines there for that um, portion I've just made? Okay, so you can start to move those around as well by grabbing on these arrows, all right? So if I want them to go a little bit higher, okay, we can do that. Go lower, you can move it side to side as well. Okay, so um, you can really use that to go through and yeah, test your car out and see you know where your turbulent flow is or your low pressure areas and that sort of stuff. Um, you can go through and edit those as well. So I'm just going to move this to the side. So if I just click on those lines, all right, you can change them to ribbons. You can do all sorts of things with them. Okay, if you go edit, all right, you can start to uh, change some of these as well. All right, so. 
the appearance, like we've looked at before. Uh, you can change them in here as well. Okay, you can change the width of them, okay, and all that sort of stuff as well. What most teams want to do is start to find the um, drag coefficient. So to do this, we go to wall calculator. We come here to the ticks and select all. And that's going to select all the surfaces. However, we don't want the wall, okay, the, the sorry, the box that we've got around the car, okay, because otherwise it's going to start calculating um, the drag of that wall as well. So we want to click on all those surfaces there. Right, I'm, sh I'm sure you notice that the, uh, the lines have now changed to a blue color. Okay, so once they're all blue, then you know you're all good. All right, so uh, I'm just going to get this back up here. Okay, so once that's all done, all right, we're just going to go to fourth and tick that. And you want to change this to Newton. Okay, um, once that's done, we go to calculate. All right, so this is going to start giving us um, all the information that we need. All right, so um, as you go through this, okay, it starts to give you a bit of information about each individual part of the car. All right, but we're interested more at the end. Okay, we've got a summary. All right, so we've got the total service area of the car. All right, that's there for you. Um, and these are all the different planes. So, for example, the FY, that's the Y axis. Okay, so this is the um, force, I suppose, in Newton's um, for lift and down force. All right, the Z axis here. Okay, this is what we're interested in. So we've got minus a 0 0.856 and so on. All right, so obviously the lower that you make that number, uh, the better that your car is. Okay, so the higher that number is, obviously the, the worse off the car is in terms of drag. Okay, so um, you want to be recording this information here. All right, this figure. And then um, obviously keep changing your car and then try and um, see if that improves it or makes it worse. So I'm just going to close the results um, section here.